I'm behind again. Part two. Yep. Uh, the, the, we call them I'm behind, but really it's more of I'm picking up what she already wrote. Right. Read. And I'll be doing one of these soonish too. Yeah, so because I'm getting ahead on other things. So there you go. So let's start with the Sundown Motel. Hotel. Mo. Ho, homo. Home hotel, home, home hotel, mo, mo hotel. I, I don't. Uh, so this is by Simone St. James, <laughs> and this is another one of those where it is part in the past, part in the present. Let's see how the two play, and it's about a haunted motel. And when I'm first starting this book, they're they're vague enough that I'm like, okay, it might not necessarily be haunted. I can, I can deal with it. Nope, it's haunted. It is haunted. It is very haunted. And uh, it, it's not quite The Shining going on here, but it, you can see it from there. And the, the whole story deals with trying to find the person who killed one of these ghosts. And the, the story, that's the story of the past. As the person... The Vivian, who comes to work at this motel after leaving her family in a huff. No, she's not a bad person. I actually kind of liked her character a lot. Um, in fact, I like just about every character in this book. Yeah, that's saying a lot. I did too. Even the villainous characters, I'm like, I can kind of get you. I, I'm a little <laughs> sketchy about you, but I get you. Oh, you're bad. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> okay. But then there's the second part, the present. And this now deals with the with Vivian's niece, as she has had this big question, why is my aunt gone? Um, because her aunt not only just left, but they knew that she disappeared uh, after going and in investigating these murders. So everybody's like, yep, she done got killed. Story finished. Bye. And she's like, wait, no, but we don't know who did it. We don't know what happened to her, so mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Uh, after you know, her own mother dies, uh, she decides to go off, and she <laughs> finds herself living in the exact same apartment as Vivian and working at the motel. And in the same shift. The same shift and the same <clears throat> ghosts-ish. And now as she's investigating her aunt's disappearance, she's discovering everything that her aunt just figured out mm. and where that leads you. And I think that this was very well done. The ending was superb. Um, I felt like it wrapped everything up very well. Did you feel like this book was creepy or like how did you feel about the ghost element of this book? There were some ghosts that I, I could tell. I could just tell. They were benign. There were some ghosts that were supposed to be creepy, but I didn't feel creeped out by yeah. them. And then there were some of them that were benign, but there was something, just something about them that set me off in the wrong way. Yeah. The smoking man disturbed me. I think that... When it comes to this book, though, I really expect it to be, like, creeped out in my house. There are times where I get, like, really creeped out if the ghosts are written in a certain way. In this book, I did not feel creeped out, but I did feel, like, intrigued and, like, suspenseful. Yes. So what did you give this book? I gave this a four star. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed it a, a lot. There was just some stylistic things that I, I had issues with. I can't really remember them off the top of my head. Right. Um, that kept it from being like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But it was good. Like it was, it's a really solid book. Oh, Let's talk about The Mall. Oh. This is by oh. Megan McCafferty, because I know he won't remember the author. No, I won't remember that, even though I literally just wrote it down a couple seconds ago. <laughs> the Mall is not a thriller. It's not really even fully a mystery. It's a treasure hunt. And a coming-of-age story, self-actualization. It's finding the best self. In the funnest way possible. It is so fun. And this is something that I've been kind of needing 
more of lately because mm. uh, we've been reading a lot of thrillers and and suspense and horror and every once in a while having a palate cleanser of 90s fun is just the thing uh, just the thing you need the characters are all pretty are solid they're three-dimensional they all kind of go through different kinds of shifts and phases and secrets the main character doesn't know because of her own issues and that was something that creeped up on me in the story mm -hmm. yeah because you are so wrapped up in her as a protagonist that you don't necessarily see her issue right until she sees her issue yeah you really take the journey with her i think yes and the other thing is she has this friend in Drea, andrea um, who works with her mother at this uh, Bella Rosa boutique. I would say it's more of like if you were around in the 90s and there are still some like pretty like rundown malls that have these type of places, you know, where it's a type of place that you went for your prom dress, small business owner, glam, fab, gaudy. <laughs> um, you know what we're talking about. That this kind yeah. of place in the mall. <laughs> and... Drea was a character, when I first saw her, I thought I was going to hate her. Um, but she's an amazing character, yes. actually. And even then, though, um, the way that she talks is very New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as I heard her first lines, I had a voice in her head. Oh, okay, well, I'm sorry. I thought she did die, so excuse me. That's what I was imagining. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I have to say about this book, because I keep telling people... I need to get the word out for this book. This book is not talked about enough. I think a lot of people think, oh, it's just one of those, you know, I don't really, it's young adult and like whatever. No, this ne book needs to be out there more because it really is, it's just the type of book that you need at this point in your life when you're stuck inside, having like depressed because of everything going on around you. Modern you romance. need this kind of fun book in your life and, and you just need it. Just yeah. need it. Just do it. Yes. Yes. So I give it five stars. Five. It's one of my favorites this year. Five stars. Especially because if you know we read a lot of thriller books and to have one that's not a thriller that's like in my five star range. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm so glad you liked this book. Honestly, I really am. I think, mm -hmm. I again, if you haven't read this book yet, please do. When I book. heard her original review of this, I thought, you know what? I'll, I'll read it. It'll probably be a three star, maybe a four star if it's really like It's a five star. Read that thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so, he doesn't like romance books, guys. So... This wasn't, I don't really feel like it was a romance There either. is romance elements, but it's romance. not, yeah. but it's not like a romance novel. No. No. Uh, no. And literally every single character in here, this is the story of how they grow into being something more. Mm -hmm. It's the Bella Rosa saying of finding yourself yeah. through these things. Yeah, exactly. And we did have this on ebook and and because i got it for review but now i actually want to purchase a physical copy of it for my collection that is like maybe the finished one because you know a lot of times when you get galleys they're not the finished product they're an uncorrected proof so getting that like physical copy might be something that i might have to do mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will put my reviews for both of these books down below so that you can check those out as well. But until next time, stay zany. Bye bye.